Okay. What am I doing? Sure. Here's my supply. What? Who? Opening fire. Oh, God. I think I got something over here. And here you are. My life's work on the verge of ruin, all because of your efforts to find Stockton's supposed daughter. You do know she's most likely a synth, yes? If you are more than a hired gun, perhaps we can stop this before it's too late. Stockton's daughter is a synth? Why else do you think we attacked her caravan? After testing. We have well over a 70% confidence level of our initial diagnosis. I'd have to perform an autopsy, to be sure. I'll give you a fair hearing. How considerate. What would you do if your family was destroyed by a synth right in front of you, when you were but a child? Would you roll over and accept it? Or would you do something about it? What happened to you? In Diamond City, a lifetime ago, my parents and eight others were massacred by someone. At first, we thought the maniac was human. But that was the day we learned of the Institute's latest creations. The Synths. As long as the Institute walks invisibly amongst us, they strike without warning and control us from the shadows. I've dedicated my life to devising a test to detect these hidden synths, to root them out so they can be extinguished. Isn't that a goal worth fighting for? A war? Really? Is it that bad? Hundreds of kidnappings over the years. Ask the survivors if it's really that bad. And they're... So many other tragedies that may be their responsibility as well. You can't seriously want to kill all the synths. We most certainly do, but we have to find them first. A living synth 
is indistinguishable from a human by any medical test yet devised. But it turns out psychology can detect a difference. Enter the safe test. The test is in its infancy, but through sacrifice and perseverance, our success rate is improving. And the safe test works? Oh, yes. Autopsies confirm the test is getting more accurate. There's something in the questions which provokes a response from Synth, but the exact trigger is elusive. The margin of error is admittedly high, four or five false positives per Synth, but one day we hope to get it to one or two false positives. But your methods are barbaric. It's torture. To improve the safe test, Intense psychological pressure must be applied to our test subjects. It is distasteful, but necessary. Covenant is many things. A refuge for the broken people left in the wake of the Institute's rampages. A place of safety and healing. But most importantly, it is our one chance to end this age of paranoia. I will make you a deal. If you let me dispose of Stockton's synth and continue our work, I'll match whatever reward you were offered. I've had my fill of crazy on this contract. No deal. Fortunate for me, I wasn't talking to you. You side with this nut job, and we're going to have a serious, deadly problem. Don't kill the girl. Spare her, for starters. Impossible. The odds are too great she's an Institute infiltrator. Even if she is an unfortunate victim in this war, sparing her can compromise everything. Continue your work, then. The ends never justify the means, General. What she's doing here is wrong. I wish you hadn't said that. You are you threatening me, Dan? I have myself a code. That's not always good on my wallet but it helps me sleep at night. I took this contract, and I will honor it, even if I have to kill you to do it. Wait. Covenant's a refuge? Over the years, we've recruited like-minded individuals, all of our lives shattered by the Institute. Covenant is primarily about administering and refining the safe test, but some consider the humanitarian side equally as important. If you destroy what's left here, their lives will be upended again. Don't kill the girl, for starters. Imp Even if she is... Sorry. That's a deal I won't accept. The ends never justify the means. Then you'll just have to kill me. Do you have a minute? What is it? When we first met, I admit, I had my doubts about you. But you've done nothing but impress me. You're just who the Minutemen needed to bring us back from the brink. Why do you care so much what happens to the Minutemen? When I was a kid, the Minutemen were my heroes. They were the only good guys around, really. When I turned 17, I joined up with Ezra Hollis's company. He was one of the good ones. Really believed in the old-time Minuteman way. We had a few good years there. I felt like I was part of something bigger than me. Like I was really helping make the Commonwealth a better place. If things were so great back then, how did it all fall apart so fast? I'm sure there was a lot I didn't see or know enough to pay attention to. You know, the politics and rivalries and bad blood between the different groups. I guess General Becker was able to keep a lid on it, keep everyone more or less on the same team. But after he was killed, it all came out in the open. I couldn't believe it at first. These guys were supposed to be Minutemen. They were supposed to put their duty to the people ahead of everything else. You probably think I was pretty naive, huh? I guess I was. Still am, too. Even after everything, I still believe that the Minutemen can be what I always thought they were. The good guys. We are the good guys. We're doing our best. And a lot of it has to do with your example. So I guess what I'm trying to say is... Thanks. Anyway, I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Anything else? No, that was it. We probably better get back to it. <laughs>